What is nitrocellulose? Also known as nitrocellulose lacquer, and nitro for short, nitrocellulose is a compound that's used to finish many instruments such as guitars, basses, violins, mandolins, and many more. But nitrocellulose is used for far more than just instrument finishes. It's used to make everything from smokeless gunpowder to adhesives to clothing. It's used in plastics, in photography, and even in microbiological research. Nitrocellulose is a type of plastic. In fact, it was the first man-made plastic, patented in 1862 by Alexander Parks. In 1868, John Wesley Hyatt improved on Parks' work, and he developed a photographic film using nitrocellulose. Commercially, nitrocellulose is referred to as celluloid, and it was the basis for lacquers and plastics until the mid-1900s. A drawback to this material is that it's extremely flammable. And in fact, nitro fires are difficult to extinguish because they don't need oxygen to burn. If you put water on them, they'll actually burn more intensely. This, along with the toxic chemicals used, has been part of what has led to it being highly regulated by the government. Taken broadly, nitrocellulose has two parts. The first is cellulose, which is an organic, fibrous material found in the cell walls of plants. Cotton and wood pulp are common sources. The cellulose is broken down with concentrated nitric acid to create a resin. The process results in a highly flammable explosive material, and it's actually very similar to how TNT or dynamite is made. When the acid-treated cellulose is mixed with solvents, it becomes lacquer, a liquid plastic that can be easily sprayed and applied to surfaces. The process of creating this lacquer was invented by Edmund Flaherty, a chemist with DuPont Chemical Company in 1921. Nitrocellulose lacquers can then be mixed with dyes to achieve different colors. Henry Ford immediately jumped on nitrocellulose lacquer as the finish for his cars because it could be applied quickly. Ford had been using Japan black lacquer because it dried the fastest, which was one of the reasons for his famous statement that you could order a Model T in any color you wanted as long as it was black. But once nitrocellulose came out in 1921, Ford realized that it dried even faster and he could get any color he wanted. And it remained the finish of choice for automobiles until the mid-1950s. Furniture and musical instrument manufacturers also started using nitrocellulose lacquer to finish their products. Pretty much any acoustic or electric guitar made prior to the mid-1960s probably has a nitrocellulose lacquer finish. After it's sprayed, and once the lacquer dries or cures, meaning the solvents evaporate or gas off, it forms a fairly hard finish. As additional coats are applied, they melt into the previous finish, making nitrocellulose finishes fairly easy to repair. Once the lacquer cures, the finish can be easily buffed or rubbed out and brought to a mirror-like sheen. A nitrocellulose finish is hard enough to protect the instrument, but can be light and thin enough not to dampen the resonance of the instrument's wood, which is a big positive. However, there are some drawbacks. Nitrocellulose can yellow as it ages. It can also become brittle and may crack or check as the instrument's wood expands and contracts in response to temperature and humidity changes. Because it's highly flammable, nitro is hard to store in large quantities and the chemicals in it are known to be very hazardous to our health and more recently developed finishes are less labor and time intensive to apply than nitro. On the plus side, as mentioned, nitro finishes look and sound good, they age very nicely. In fact, nitrocellulose lacquer continues to cure or gas off for many years and actually gets thinner and thinner over time. So it's fascinating, at least to me, to realize that vintage guitars had thicker finishes when they were new than they do now, because the finishes continued to age and cure over the years and decades that have passed since they were made. In response to all this, many newer nitrocellulose lacquers use different formulations than earlier finishes. They yellow and fade less, and they're softer, meaning they're less brittle. And this is because they include plasticizers. And in this case, plasticizer refers to plasticity, or the, <laughs> the ability of a material to deform without breaking, not as plastic as a material. Now, some of this has been to improve the finishes, but a lot of it has been in response to regulations about chemicals, the environment, health hazards, and much more. A proper spray booth with sufficient filtering and air extraction, as well as protective masks and gears required for spraying nitrocellulose lacquer these days. This means that typically, nitrocellulose finishes are found on mid to higher end instruments these days. So what about that commonly heard statement that nitro finishes breathe and let the guitar resonate more than other finishes? If we think about it, the finished breathing implies that air gets in and out, which of course isn't true. There's no way an auto manufacturer would finish a metal car with a finish that breathed. It would simply lead to a rusty car. So there's not much truth to that statement. However, some do feel the nitrocellulose lacquer looks, feels, and sounds better than other finishes, and it certainly does age in a very desirable way. And of course, it can also be very easily repaired, which is another big positive. If you want to learn more about audio and music concepts like this, visit the news and research page at sweetwater.com or check out the other videos in our Glossary Terms playlist.